He doesn't have a great challenge, a challenger just yet, but President Obama's re-election campaign is already shelling out big bucks as it sets the stage for what will be a high-stakes showdown. The question is, can any of the remaining GOP candidates keep up? Joining us now for a fair and balanced debate, radio talk show host Alan Combs and Monica Crowley. Welcome, my friends. Great to have you on board Hi. today. Hi, Uma. How are you doing? Great to see you guys. Well, many months ago, the president declared he needed to raise a billion dollars for his re-election bid. Lots of folks gasped at that figure. But it's clear he's determined his organization is ready for battle with a whopping $135 million so far, $3 million more than the entire GOP field combined. Monica, do you think the GOP can even compete in this arena? Well, they are going to be able to compete, but I'm not quite sure they're going to be able to match President Obama's fundraising numbers. He has proven himself to be quite a fundraising juggernaut. We saw that in 2008, where he was able to raise $753 million. He wants to at least match that or maybe even hit the one billion mark. His campaign fundraising this time, although it's been very extensive and he has done more campaign fundraisers than any other presidential uh, candidate at this point in the election cycle. He hasn't quite raised the amount that they were targeting. Now, that, that doesn't mean that he's going to have a problem, but it does mean that in terms of uh, the pacing, according to last time around, it's a little bit more sluggish for him. The Republicans have their work cut out for them. Uh, I think once we do have a nominee, assuming that it's going to be Mitt Romney, I think that the money will really start flowing in. Whether or not they can match the billion dollar or even $800 million mark that Obama is likely to hit is a different question. Well, Alan, the president's campaign is already a a large campaign network with some 500 paid staffers yeah. in 45 states and has given the okay yeah. to having a political action committee run by former aides despite criticizing right. these groups in the past. Doesn't this add to voter cynicism when a candidate says one thing and then just does the opposite? Well, yeah, but it, you can't, he can't play by different rules than the Republicans are. I know he wouldn't want to have to do the super PACs, but you know, it's got to be an even playing field. By the way, he never said the billion dollars. That was a figure that was put out, but not by the White House. And furthermore, he's got the power of the incumbency. Of course, he's going to do well fundraising. The Republicans haven't gotten behind a candidate yet. And those who are endorsing Mitt Romney, like Marco Rubio, do it half-heartedly. So they're not going to have the same fundraising capability until they actually have a candidate that the party, even if it's biting its lip while it's doing it, uh, can get behind. Well, you know, let's talk now, moving along about from fundraising to another issue that drew some buzz this week when the president was speaking on an open mic with the Russian president saying he would have more flexibility on missile defense after he won the election. Let's listen into this. Where one man cannot lose, the fate of the world rests in one top secret mission. This is my last election, please. Yeah. Um, this after my election, I have more flexibility. So that's an ad that uh, the GOP is running with because they're showing uh, how they're going to seize the moment on that open mic mm -hmm. moment. Monica, do you think that it sends a message that the American people uh, can't be trusted if the president is honest with them about what he hopes to do? Well, I think this ad is particularly effective, Uma, because it does reinforce an existing narrative about this president that he is uh, perhaps freelancing foreign policy, that he's making deals, if he's making deals with Medvedev to transmit information to the incoming Russian president, Vladimir <laughs> Putin, what is he telling other leaders? And it, I think it also reinforces this idea that the president, if he doesn't have another re-election hanging over his head, that he will have a free hand to do whatever he wants, whether it's missile or defense deals with, with the Russians, or here at home, he would go over the heads of the Congress issuing uh, executive orders, going through bureaucratic fiat, and so on. I think there is a great fear that this president, who has shown an inclination to do that in his first term, would likely increase it, up it, escalate it in a second term, because he doesn't have to worry about re-election. And that's what I think that this ad reinforces, and that's why I think it's so incredibly effective. Alan, what do you think about Monica's fears, the fact that she says uh, that this is going to give oh, him a I'm blank so slate? I'm so scared. This president's going to become a Marxist and take over the entire United States and tell us what to eat. And and tell us what industries are going to take over all the, the industry. Now, look, uh, what he did, did was real politic. That's what it's called. He knows he's got a Congress that just wants him out of office. He cannot negotiate with a Congress that wants nothing other than to take away his power base. That's the truth. What he was heard saying on an open mic is actually the truth, that he has more flexibility once he's reelected, which I think he's likely to be, and he has a Congress with whom maybe he'll be able to work better with. So I, I, I think what he said was nothing terrible, nothing that any other president wouldn't have said in a conversation 
with another leader Alan, talking Alan, about you what, have to what admit, the realities are. You have to admit that had President Bush said this off mic, whispering to a Russian president, just give me a little space, give me a little time. After <laughs> yeah. I get reelected, I will have more flexibility. Flexibility for what? You guys on the left would be screaming probably for his impeachment. Uh, no, oh no, uh, we're not the people oh, who impeach yes. presidents. That's your side. That's the <laughs> other side that does that. Uh, it's, it's the Republicans who scream oh, impeachment on. every time there's a Democratic president. Uh, this is real politics. This is the way negotiations take place. And yes, he will have more flexibility when he has but hopefully that, a more to, to that point, uh, though, Alan, willing to work with Congress. To that point, though, Alan, there are, what, are you, what do you say to the critics who say, well, this just shows that he is giving the Russians uh, a tip so that to sh let them feel that he's going to be weak on missile defense and that uh, well, it's going to be an open why, why would you be weak? Why, why, why would you presume weakness? He's, he'll I'm, be in a better negotiating position in the future. What does that mean, I weakness? Can, it I actually can actually answer that strength. question. Alan, I can actually answer your question. Because in okay. the first missile defense deal that he did with the Russians called the New START Treaty, he gave away mm -hmm. the store. He gave the Russians oh, everything they wanted and did not get <laughs> one single concession for the United States from the Russians. So based on that track mm -hmm. record, Alan, there are a lot of concerns that he would do even worse should he win re-election uh, and have a second term. That this is a myth yeah. that the president somehow uh, <laughs> gives away the store, doesn't want to defend no, it's, the country, it's a doesn't fact. want missile defense, that he, I know. he's an open negotiator. I know and that's this, the way I know this conversation, guys. To, to do that. I, I know this conversation, guys, could go on for hours. And I We're going to keep going uh, on. You're going to keep so. going, but I know deep down you both really love each other, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us today with your insights. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank Thanks, you. Uma. Well, Rick